Hey, I'm Charlie Papillo. Welcome to Travels with Charlie, Vermont politics and real life. I'm in St. Albans Bay today, looking for a place to swim. Judging by the pollution around me, I don't think it's happening here today. We're gonna need a magic unicorn to solve the problems of this lake. We're in St. Albans Bay today, and we're gonna to be talking about cleaning up the lake and some of the pollution that's around us today. I wanna to thank my guests for joining me today. Uh, Julie Moore, Secretary of Vermont Agency of Natural Resources, and Buzz Herr. Buzz is the former chair of the Vermont Citizens Advisory Committee on the future of Lake Champlain. I'm not sure if there's an acronym for that, but we'll figure it out at some point later on. And we haven't got enough time. We haven't got enough time <laughs> to do that. Well, thank you both for being here today. And Absolutely. certainly, as we take a look around, uh, the visual, and we don't have smell of vision here, but the smell of what we have here. Um, Julie, this, you know, we talk about runoff, we talk about blue-green algae. What is it that we're seeing out here today? Well, there's a mixed composition out here today. The, the bright green material that's flowing behind you is actually duckweed, uh, which is a, a small plant. Um, and then there's also a, a considerable amount of milfoil in St. Albans Bay, among other aquatic plants. Uh, milfoil, however, is an invasive one. Um, and once it gets a foothold, it, it really tends to take over and, and frankly is responsible also for a lot of smell as it decays on the shores while the water pulls back. The bloom started earlier this year than they have in, in recent past. Um, and, and I think as a result, uh, affected more people's recreation plants. What is blue-green algae? Blue-green algae forms in calm, warm water when enriched with nutrients like phosphorus. During large outbreaks, called algae blooms, the water can be lethal to dogs, and recreational use of the water comes to a halt. In recent years, sections of Lake Champlain like St. Albans Bay have experienced widespread blooms, some spreading as far as a mile or more. Buzz, you've been involved in clean waterways, or trying to have clean waterways in the state of Vermont for how many years now? 24. 24 years. Have you seen it get worse, stayed the same? I've been talking to my neighbors a lot lately about the spate of blue-green algae blooms that are happening this year, were identified and happened. And I think I'd answer the question a little bit different way. When, when we first started noticing that when the dogs died down on Lake Champlain, the sentiment changed from brown boat bottoms not being anybody's problem to all of a sudden it's a public health issue. And I think the public health aspect of it really um, uh, got into the consciousness of people around the lake. And I'd say this year was, the, uh, was probably the biggest year of personal reactions to those warnings that I've seen where people wouldn't let their kids get in the water, they yeah. wouldn't let their dogs get in the water, um, they're scared when even their pets drink the water because they've heard all the stories. Sure. So uh, it's, it's interesting doing the citizens advisory committee aspect because you learn that everybody has a different sort of reaction to it. Mm -hmm. And the one I'd say collectively is the one that hit me the most this year is how, how personal people take the blooms now and um, are concerned about sure. it and won't let people get in the water. Julie, is there a dollar figure that you can put on loss of economic activity with what's happening? Uh, of course, you know, as Buzz mentions, many of us here in the state we're aware of it, but are people outside of the state aware of it when they say, you know, where do you want to go this summer? Let's go camping in Vermont. Let's go fishing. Let's go boating in Vermont. If they knew that a lot of this existed, they might choose someplace else to go. Right. Cer certainly here in Vermont, our economy is our environment. Um, and so it is important that we have, have beautiful blue lakes and green woods behind them. Um, and we know that Poor water quality uh, can have a detrimental effect on property values as well as tourism, the tourism industry upon which the state so heavily depends. Uh, there, there are innumerable Vermont waters that are in really good shape, um, but there are also clearly pockets that show some pretty profound impacts from phosphorus pollution. Um, and it, ultimately, I do believe it could have a detrimental impact on our economy if our, our work to address it isn't successful. I know you've written some some articles on it this didn't happen overnight correct and it's not going to get cleaned up overnight either correct. we're probably give us some scary numbers i mean it's going to take 
millions, maybe billions of dollars to clean up and get back to where it needs to be. Am I right? You're right. Our best estimate is that it's a $2 billion proposition, and it, we believe it'll take us likely 20 years, if not longer, to, to fully implement the practices. That's not to say that, that people won't start to see improvements um, in a shorter period of time, but, but we've got an inordinate amount of work to do. There, more than half the land area of Vermont, as well as portions of New York and Quebec, drain into Lake Champlain, and it's literally tens of thousands of modest projects that ultimately will be required uh, to address the phosphorus and nutrient loss from the landscape and restore the water quality we want in the lake. The, the lake, we talk about cleaning the lake, the lake isn't actually our problem, it, our problems are back on the land. Buzz, is Vermont doing enough? What do you think? Maybe we as individuals need to start doing some things too. What do you think? Well, that, that's helpful. I think the more we uh, raise awareness to um, everybody being in some small or even larger way a contributor to this problem that are in this watershed, um, sort of brings it home, especially when they have personal reactions to not being able to get into the lake. So, right. yeah. uh, but everybody should be doing something. The concern I have, particularly about dairy being such a major factor, is that it's a it's a business in crisis in this state, and uh, it's in crisis all across the country. But um, the the issue of dairy prices staying where they are and farmers not being able to lower their costs enough to eke out a profit it's a really tough business to be in right now and and that's one of your major partners to get action done and it's it's when they're just trying to stay anywhere close to break even never mind getting past yeah. it it's it's a tough sell and all the while we're sitting here having a conversation today i brought this up to you I said this guy's fishing over there i hope he doesn't eat the fish and you said that it really isn't a problem no, we, we haven't seen that the toxins that are produced by the cyanobacteria uh, accumulate in fish in a way that would, would make people sick. So if he invites us uh, to the fish fry later, Buzz, I'm Julie, in. you're I'm in? in. Yeah. You're yep. in, okay. Yep. As long as there's plenty of tartar sauce, I guess. <laughs> I'm in too. So Julie, we've talked about some of the things that we can do to clean up the lake, but I don't think we really got into any high tech and that's kind of beyond my pay grade, but maybe you can sure. comment on some of the things that are being done around the world. And if we keep walking in this direction, Buzz is gonna be going for a swim. And I don't <laughs> think he wants that. It's unscheduled. What are some of the other things that could be done and maybe we're doing them here in this state. We are, so we launched uh, about 15 months ago right now something called the Vermont Phosphorus Innovation Challenge and it's an X Prize or Shark Tank style event uh, where we had a quarter million dollars and we solicited ideas from entrepreneurs and businesses about how they would go about uh, reducing phosphorus pollution. Uh, we received 27 proposals, which was far more than expected, wow. and ultimately funded six projects. Um, and it's a range of practices. Uh, some of them are looking at removing phosphorus from treated wastewater prior to discharging it, um, coupling them with anaerobic digesters on farms and looking yeah. for ways to concentrate phosphorus so that it could be used in potting soils or uh, compost style amendments um, with the hope that we can either create a product that is more easy to move around the watershed and we can stop importing um, potting soil and other materials elsewhere or even better ship it back out of the Champlain Basin mm. uh, to places where there, there may not be enough phosphorus. So this is the point where I usually bring out the magic wand or in this case uh, our, our magic unicorn. I'll give you the wand first Julie. What would you like to see? Well, I would like to see uh, lake, both Lake Champlain and inland lakes and ponds that are free of harmful algal blooms that have uh, limited nuisance plant growth and are fully accessible for, for recreation, for fishing, for drinking water, and all the other reasons we enjoy Vermont's waters. And that requires a lot of work to take place on the landscape. Yeah. And so my magic wand would ensure that all of the stormwater practices, agricultural practices, wastewater treatment improvements that it, we know are needed and are going to take time to implement happen like that. And you'll need a lot of money to do it too. So Absolutely. wave that wand again, <laughs> get a big bag of money. We're talking billions. Yes, yes. Buzz. So my magic wand, as Julie said, the story of the lake is really the story of the watershed. It's by the time it gets here, it's really difficult to have any impact on this. So whenever I think about my magic wand, especially in light of the dairy crisis right now, I'm thinking about what is the state going to do to help that industry? And it, they're making some efforts, but help that industry transition out of the rut it's in because I, the, those low prices have no end in sight. And they're a major aspect of this watershed 
cleanup program. And if they're not healthy, um, you can do all the suburban, cut your lawn higher and all that sort of stuff. But in areas like this, um, that problem has really got to be addressed and, and they have to be made healthy or transition to something else. Who wants to go for a ride in the unicorn? I'm in. You're in. Wow. I'll, I'll, I'll take the You're braver than me. You, you weren't doing well with the paddle. I'll see no, if you can do that. It's not as easy as it looks. Once again, I want to thank my guest today, Julie Moore, Secretary of Vermont Agency of Natural Resources. Julie, thank, thank you. you so much for being with us today. And of course, Buzz Hur, former Thanks. chair of the Vermont Citizens Advisory Committee on the Future of Lake Champlain. There is a. It's a big acronym. It's a big acronym. <laughs> we'll get it for you in the next episode. I'll see you in my travels. Covering lots of ground. If be so kind and share what's on your mind. I think our work is done here today. Time, well time to go home. What do you say? Let's go. Talking president. Though we may not agree, let your thoughts run free. You can have your turn if you feel the burn.